Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to pick number 17 in my top 30 Southern Rock album countdown. That's right. We're doing this each and every morning here in the month of June 2022, 30 days of June. My 30 favorite Southern Rock albums, although if you saw yesterday's show, yeah, you get 31 this month. It happens. I got to pull a Pardo at least once every month, right? Because there's always something I forget at the last minute. And I got to do a double shot for you. That's what I did yesterday. So if you missed yesterday's show, tune in, go back to the playlist, go watch it. And then here we are for day number or pick number 17, I should say. But it is the 14th of this month, right? Pick number 17. This particular album, uh, again, one of those bands that's going to show up multiple times in this countdown. No surprise to anybody, this particular album was released on July 3rd, 1990 for Epic Records, produced by Tom Dowd. That's right. It's the comeback album from the Allman Brothers Band. Seven Turns on the Highway, right? Seven Turns, great album. The Allman Brothers Band regrouping after, what, close to a decade or so? They played some live dates throughout the decade of the 80s, but for the most part, they were kind of a done deal for a while. But, you know, Dickie Betts had the Dickie Betts band going in the late 80s. He recruited two guys, a guitar player and a bass player named uh, Mr. Warren Haynes on guitars and Alan Woody on bass guitar. He had them in his uh, his solo band. You had Greg Allman doing his thing. You know, you had a couple of the other guys doing C level and all sorts of other projects, right? Well, they decide to get together, put out that big dreams box set, do a reunion tour with all those cats. All right. The bigger, this is the big Allman Brothers band, lots of guys in the band at this point in time. And then they decide, you know what? The tour went really well. We're getting along. Let's, let's do a studio album. So they put this album out, right? Greg Allman, Hammond B3 organ, lead vocals, Dickie Betts, electric and acoustic guitars, lead vocals, J-Mo, drums and percussion, Butch Trucks, drums and timpani, Warren Haynes, electric and acoustic guitar, some lead vocals, Johnny Neal on piano, Wurlitzer organ, synthesizers, harmonica, and Alan Woody on bass guitar. A couple other guys helping out uh, on this particular album. Dwayne, the very, very young at the time, Dwayne Betts helping out on guitar on uh, one track as well. So, you know, this is a return to great form for the band. So this album, and all the ones that they did after this, uh, before they kind of packed it in and called it a day, I would put up there with just about any of the classic Allman Brothers albums from the early 70s. You know, they, they had that middle period, those like late 70s, very, very early 80s albums, which in my opinion, most of them are fairly weak. They're, they're just some great songs interspersed on all those albums you probably could take the really good songs out of all those albums and put them on one you got a you got a pretty decent album there but you know after after brothers and sisters the kind of the quality of some of the material went downhill a lot of drug use going on in the band a lot of infighting a lot of crazy stuff going on hookups with Cher and all this crazy stuff but uh back to business here starts off with a great song called good clean fun all right, great kickoff track to this album, and that basically lets you know what you're in store for throughout the rest of the way. Really good, upbeat, you know, bluesy rock song, you know, with that southern flair. Let Me Ride, that's a Diggy Betts song that's also uh, got that great southern flavor to it. Slide guitars and things going on. You got Low Down, Dirty Mean, snarling, snarling hard rocker, great song, Shining On. Uh, what's really great about this album is the, the songwriting. You know, you've got everybody's writing for the most part on this. And, and as it turns out, Warren Haynes, a terrific songwriter that the band found out pretty early on here. So he's teaming up with, uh, with, with Dickie on Shining On. A great song with a great chorus. Again, it's kind of a bluesy rock song. Southern flavors. Loads of guitars on here. Uh, loaded Dice, again, with that same writing team, Betts and Haynes. Uh, loaded Dice... One of the best songs on the album, folks. Loaded Dice, so good. Uh, there's a sophistication to all these songs that is like undeniable. Then you got Seven Turns, a Dickie Betts song, more of kind of like a country rocker, right? We got the acoustic guitars out, got the great chorus. You got Greg on the backing vocal on this. 
excellent song. Should have been a major hit for them. This, this to me, Seven Turns was kind of like their Melissa, their Ramblin' Man for the '90s. Um, yeah, it got some radio airplay, but I think you know, I think uh, overall, this this album was very well received at the time and sold decent. But I think it could have been pushed a little bit harder because I think that the, the songs are on here. Uh, Gambler's Roll, mm, also probably one of the top songs on the album. Darker, slow blues song as only Olin Brothers can do it. Excellent, excellent vocal from Greg on this. Really, I mean, Greg's vocals on this whole album are really, really good. Uh, True Gravity, excellent. The instrumental interplay is just off the charts. You got the guitars weaving and winding around each other, all the drums and percussion, man. Great, great song. And In Ain't Over Yet is the last track. That's a Doug Kreider and uh, Johnny Neal song. And that's very rootsy, southerny, uh, also a very, very fun song. Great melody on that, great chorus. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a weak song to be had on this entire album. Top to bottom, really, really good. You know, I could have put, <clears throat> just to be frank with you guys, because that's generally what I do here, <clears throat> I could have put all the subsequent Allman Brothers releases post this one uh, on this list. You know, Shades of Two Worlds, and then all those, there's three of them that come after this. All three of them are of similar high quality to this. Uh, I think this one might be my favorite of the four of them. And I, like I said, I didn't want to have like seven, eight Allman Brothers albums in this list. So I, I, what I did was I picked one from the latter era, era to kind of represent... Uh, the latter period Allman Brothers band. So I decided to go with this one for this for this month. But you know, I didn't, if I were to do this again in a couple of months, I might have picked another one uh, because I like them all pretty much equally. But uh, yeah, but I'm going to go with Seven Turns today. I just think it's one of the great comeback records of all time. And that's another reason why I generally rank it pretty high. But yes, just some stellar songs on here. You know, if you haven't heard this album, go right now, listen to Good, Clean, Fun, Low Down, Dirty Mean, Shining On, Loaded Dice, Gambler's Roll, Man, True Gravity's Grab, and I'm here I am naming all the song, songs on here because they're that good. If you like the 70s stuff, if you like the more radio-friendly stuff, definitely check out Seven Turns, the title track, which is really, really good. Uh, like I said, more, you know, rootsy, uh, country-flavored uh, acoustic song. But yeah, the whole album's just, and great guitar work on this album. Really, really good. Really, really good. If you love hearing Gibson Les Pauls, baby all over on this. So yeah, Seven Turns from the Allman Brothers Band, 1990. That is my pick number 17. Here on my Top 30 Southern Rock album countdown, let us know what you think of Seven Turns, as well as list your pick for today, because we are at number 17. Tomorrow we'll be at number 16. Stay tuned to see what I have in store for you tomorrow morning and each and every day throughout the rest of the month of June. So uh, thanks for watching. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Stay tuned. Coming up here on the channel, we've got tonight, we have In the Prog Seat. That's right. It's Tuesday. Got a cool show for you. We're going to uh, visit or revisit 1973. We did it last week on the Hudson Valley Squares. We're doing it tonight on In the Prog Seat. We're going to be picking our five favorite albums from 1973 of the prog and fusion genres because that's what we do on In the Prog Seat. So last week was more of your hard rock and metal stuff. Tonight, you get your prog and your fusion on In the Prog Seat from 1973, our five favorites. So tune in here with the staff, what the panel has to say. Uh, we've also coming up today, uh, we've got a very cool interview with Marbin, guitar player. Danny Rabin spoke with him late last night. That's going to be up on the uh, channel today. They are a great fusion band from the Chicago area. Have a whole bunch of albums. They've got a brand new one album out, a brand new album out that uh, we're going to be talking about on the show. So stay tuned. That's coming up shortly. Uh, that will be uh, a really cool interview that uh, Eric. Porter and George Lemieux and myself conducted uh, late last night. So uh, check that out here on the channel. And uh, yeah. That's about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you real soon. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell. We also have below the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as a link to our um, merch page. All sorts of cool Sea of Tranquility stuff, including a new customizable mixtape challenge shirt. So, you know, you've seen the shirt, hopefully. it's a. It's, I've, I've worn it plenty of times on the show, as of other folks on the channel here. It's basically a shirt that has, like, uh, you know, pretend this was a cassette tape, right? So it's got like 10 cassette tapes stacked up where you see the spines and you can, all you can see is the title of the CD. Well, basically now you can create your own 
Sea of Tranquility mixtape shirt. So you, you uh, there's a little link there. You can send an email to David, who creates all of our merch, and you can let him know, well, these are the 10 albums that I want represented on the mixtape spines, and he will create that for you and ship it off to you. So it's got the big Sea Tranquility logo at the top and cool stuff. So uh, that and uh, all, all sorts of new designs and things like that. So please go check it out. The link is below. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm Pete Pardo. See you real soon. Bye-bye.